Good morning, everybody, and thanks so much for being here. We've got a heck of a day planned because we are going into some awesome content today, and I'm so excited about this particular topic because we've known for a really long time, social media is driving engagement. It's where the world is turning. It's how we actually socialize. It's a really, really fascinating thing that's happened. And obviously, we've dug in super big into how different social channels operate and how to leverage them for synergies in your business and to get more leads, do more deals, right? Right. But what's also happened recently, um, which I'm sure you're already plugged into, is artificial intelligence entering the scene um, and really changing the game. And so today we're going to look at how do those things work together? How are other agents really maximizing this and industry professionals who are using this at the highest degree to get really huge impact in their business? And today we have not only uh, the one and only Christine Kite, one of our top leaders here inside the community. Awesome. Thanks for being here. But one of her good friends, Travis Newton, who's a VP of... Uh, production over at Synergy One Lending and uh, his his good friend, James Swift, who's a loan officer there. They're going to be talking through us uh, or with us through what a lot of people are doing that are creating leverage at a high level. So, all right, without further ado, I'll introduce these two superstars today, Christine and Travis. Thank you guys so much for being here. It's really exciting to uh, to bring top level talent. Can, can you hear thank me okay? You. So, yes. Oh, there we yes, go. Thank you. So we want to get James in here too. It looks like James and Travis both made it today. And um, they uh, have an awesome presentation for everyone today about social media and how it has been impacting their business, let alone uh, reaching um, the consumers out there um, on more of an improving their reach um, just by what they're doing. Um, I know Travis will mention it in his presentation, but he's actually been seeing um, a growth of what, 22% year over year, let alone just when you started this 13 months ago, um, has seen a lot of consumer reach. And so really excited because I, I did get a chance to work with these guys already um, on some social media stuff and wanted to bring them here because they've already learned so much in the last six months. And um, so take it away, Travis and James. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thanks so much. And you guys are really lucky because it was just going to be me for this whole hour, hour and a half, how long I'm going to be on here. But luckily, uh, James is a horrible hunter and he decided not to go hunting again. And so he's going to gonna help us with the presentation. So um, and we, we do things better together anyway. So it's going to be awesome. So we'll get started here. So um, it's a little bit about, about us. Um, so I've been in business for about 23 years, been doing loans for a long time. Uh, James has been a good buddy of mine for 15, 16 years. And uh, about... Three years ago, I guess, two and a half years ago, he retired from the military. Um, he served his uh, great 20 years and decided to uh, to join me in the business. And it's been awesome. And we went all in on video and social social media really about 13 months ago. And uh, you guys all know the market we're in right now. People are down 60%, 70%, loan officers and realtors alike. Um, we're actually up 22% year over year um, in this hard market. And the, the one thing that we've changed is we made social media and, uh, you know, integrating um, AI into our business as a non-negotiable. So we are all in on that. And that's the one thing we've changed. And the one thing we can attribute our 22% growth in a market like this um, uh, to, that's all we can attribute it to. It's just hard work and just doing the things that we know we should be doing with video and social. The change anything to add there? Not really. You took my intro away from me. So <laughs> let's just uh, let's rock and roll on some AI and how we're, you know, leveraging us just as, as a small piece of, of what's helping us see, um, you know, success on this on the social media world. Right. All right. We'll get our screen share here started and go from there. James, you're going to start off. OK, well, well you sailed right past the intro page. So let's go right past that guy right there. And let's uh, let's start talking about chat GPT a little bit, which, uh, you know, again, this is just a it's one piece of the pie of, of AI. There's so much uh, AI just hitting the scene quickly, right? Um, and a lot of apps that probably a lot of you use have started to embed uh, you know, AI into the apps themselves. But uh, chat, chat, chat GPT is making a lot of noise right now, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about what that looks like, what some of the other you know, competitors, if you will, you know, are that you can look into using as well, um, you know, how to use it uh, as a real estate agent and how we leverage it as a lender. So um and then uh, just a couple of of you know examples to so to to go over with you so 
Um, Travis, uh, okay, so here's what's, here's what's awesome about this. I won't read it to you. I'll let you read it. But this is what ChatGPT tells us is ChatGPT. So, again, ChatGPT making our life easier by creating our slides for us. So, <laughs> but in, uh, in a nutshell, right, Travis, go to the next, uh, next slide. Chat GPT is basically like Jarvis for Iron Man. It's it's a digital assistant just to help you streamline your business, help you um, be, be more efficient in uh, accomplishing your tasks and helping you just, uh, quite frankly, you know, get over the hurdle of the, the barriers of entry of, you know, the, that we talk about a lot of how to get started in using social media. But, but we're going to go over a lot of different things that aren't just social media related, other other ways you can leverage ChatGPT. So Travis, go ahead and go to the next slide and take it away. Hey, so just real quick, I put in the chat box, um, who is currently using ChatGPT right now in the industry for real estate and how are you using it? Throw it in the chat box, we're curious. Yeah, yeah so the, the difference between, you guys can yeah. see how fast- Yeah, so the, go ahead, sorry, okay. So, so we're going to talk a lot about about OpenAI, and and that is what ChatGPT that that's their parent company is OpenAI. So, if you're going to go download, and you're going to, they're going to see some some slides here that you, we're going to show you how to download that. But if you haven't downloaded ChatGPT, make sure you're downloading the one that's powered by OpenAI, and we'll have a slide on that here here shortly here. So, ChatGPT is 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 likely the fastest growing app in the internet history. I mean, it's been you can see the difference here. I mean, it reached 100 million users in just two months following its release. Um, it, it really is the next big thing. Uh, in a moment, you can decide you know, for yourself what that looks like. But you can see what, um, how long it took, just for example, how long it took took Facebook and Instagram to get to where they were at and, and how long it took ChatGPT and OpenAI to, to reach 100 million users. It's incredible. So um, I don't know what the exact uh, exact you know, amount right now, but it's probably close to 200 million users as of now. Yeah, and what, what's crazy is, um, you know, recently Microsoft said that AI's impact on our lives is going to be as big as, you know, the, the personal computer and the internet, right? And there's a lot of naysayers in the early internet days, right? But they just invested $10 billion in open AI, um, you know, the maker of ChatGPT, and uh, added it to their office suite, Bing. So if you go to Bing, you can see that they've integrated it into their search engine. So they're they're really investing. Uh, AI is, you know, a lot of it's still, you know, early, but, you know, we have the opportunity here to be early adopters and what is likely just going to be a massive thing uh, that we can leverage in our industry. So here you can see that the, the difference between chat GPT-3, we're going to go into a little bit more details on that, but the one that we've been using for the last, really half, last, you know, year and a half or so was chat GPT-3. And it had it had 175 billion language parameters that it currently it was currently trained on. Well, ChatGPT4 is now released, and it's said to have over 100 trillion language parameters. You can see the difference there; it's incredible. So it improves the ability to mimic human behavior and speech patterns, which is which is it's going to be amazing to see that. Um, there's also some slides we're going to go into details on those things. So this means that ChatGPT4 will be much better understanding human intentions, which is kind of scary, but we're going to need to use it. Yeah. Now, for those of you who are already uh, putting in the chat box that you are already experimenting with ChatGPT or are already integrating it in your social media, um, you know, content, um, you'll probably already know that they've released a premium version called, you know, uh, ChatGPT Plus, right? Which is which is twenty dollars a month. Um, it, it's something that I use because we use a lot of this AI stuff a lot for a lot of our scripting, um, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but includes access to the chat GPT-4, and then it includes the use of plugins. And we're going to talk about, you know, how to use, um, you know, some of the plugins to an enhance your business uh, in some of the slides here in just a, in a little bit. Yeah, so here's some, some of the plugins that, uh, you know, just recently chat GPT expanded its uh, capability to access the internet, of course. So before, before, before chat GPT-3 was only, it would cut off around 2021. I'm sorry, 2021, yeah. And so... It only had the ability to go back to 2021 or up to that point. Well, now ChatGPT4 is can access the internet, obviously, and so now it's everything that they can do is 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 recent, up to date. Um, so so this this feature costs about uh, twenty dollars a month uh, to do, and uh, again, we found it to be really well worth it. And we know that you guys, as real estate agents, can utilize uh, AI. In a, in a much different way than we can and maybe more beneficial than, than we can. 
So the things we can use it for are pretty incredible. And the way that you guys can access it and use it and incorporate that into your business is going to be remarkable. Yeah. Now, if you're already a chat GPT plus user or, or if you like log in to become a chat GPT plus user, this is the screen that you'll see or that you can get into in your settings to go in and enable the beta features. Because again, a lot of the plugins are still in beta. So I've only played around with a couple of the plugins there. There are tons of plugins that have nothing to do with, uh, you know, things that would be beneficial for use in our industry, but are still interesting to go in and play with. And then of course, there's a lot of uh, plugins that are um, extremely beneficial. Um, I've so far used the the Canva plugin, and I've used the um, the CapCut. I do a lot of editing in CapCut, so both of those have plugins. Again, they're early, so uh, they using the plugins for me hasn't like got me to completely go away from just getting into CapCut by itself. But I'm learning it early because this is going to take off quickly. Um, so this is the screen that you need to get into to turn on the beta features. Uh, Travis, go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, you might get when you turn on your um, when you turn on the plugins, it might put you on a waiting list. It didn't put me on a waiting list. It let me write in, so it might put you on a waiting list later as this thing starts to uh, get more noise, get more attention. And then Travis, on the next slide, um, and it's going to show you just an example of of some of the um, the plugins that are available. But there's there's hundreds of plugins, and then you and they're searchable, so you can search for you know, video or, or YouTube or anything like that. And it's going to pull up plugins that somehow relate or do something on those platforms. Right. So just an example of plugins, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on those, but just want to let you know that those are now available uh, in the plus version. So there's a lot of different ways. We'll, we'll, we won't go into detail on a, on a lot of these different slides because there's not, I mean, we're, we're going to send you guys all a copy of this. So we'll send it to send it out and, and, and Jeff can give it over to you guys. So you'll have a copy of all of this. Um, the official OpenAI chat GPT app is obviously available. The app syncs with your desktop. So you can use it on desktop or your mobile device. Um, it's only on, I think it's currently only on, on iOS. It's not on uh, Android yet. Yep, correct. Um, there are some options to use. Uh, there are also competitors that are available for um, Android. Um, but again, like I mentioned before, look out for the other so-called chat GPT apps um, that are not from the creator OpenAI. Make sure that you are you are looking for the chat or the OpenAI. That's that's the chat GPT you want. Don't doubt. Yeah, so in regards to co competitors, um, Travis, like uh so Bard AI is basically Google's answer, right? And of course, Google is going to be on the scene. So Bard AI, if you go to that, if you go to the, uh, just go Google Bard, it's going to take you to Google's version of ChatGPT, right? So obviously, they're in a battleground for dominance, um, kind of to be determined for me, I guess, on, on which one I'll use uh, moving forward, you know, permanently, I guess. I, right now, I use ChatGPT4 because it's mobile, it's on my phone, I'm not you know, I love using apps, uh, but here, let's give you a quick rundown of kind of some of the differences of ChatGPT versus um, Google Bard. Uh, Google, uh, next slide, Travis. So here's the here's the Bard interface. So if you were to go to bard.google.com, this is what you'll see uh, down at the bottom where you can enter any prompt that you want. And we're going to go into like how you should phrase your prompts here uh, a little while later in, in more detail, but you should always ask it like in the tone that you want it to develop something for you. So, you know, as a real estate agent in, uh, you know, the Arizona market or the Oregon market, uh, wherever you're at, um, make me a listing for, so you're always saying, you know, as a real estate agent or for us, like right, as a lender, so that you're letting the, uh, the AI platform know like what perspective you're wanting them to write your script for you. Uh, Travis, next slide. Okay, so and then just as, here's just an example of a prompt uh, asking Bard, give me the real estate market statistics for the city of Las Vegas for May of 2023. Uh, Travis, this, is this one a playable slide or is this just a screenshot example? I can't remember which one's our video. Screenshot. Yeah. Okay, screenshot. Okay, so go ahead and go ahead and go to the next slide. We have we have a few of these that are videos that will like it'll be a demonstration of us asking a question and like how it develops the answer for you. So here's the same exact prompt as what Bard had put out earlier, and and this is this is the answer that Chat GPT gave us. So, just as a little bit more see, detail on Chat. Go ahead, Travis. Yeah, as you can see, this is the, all they asked. They asked, you know, Chat GPT um, to give me the real estate market statistics for Las Vegas for May of 2023, and this is what it spit out. And you can put in, you know, you can put in Salem, 
Uh, you can put it in any, any city you're in. It's going to show up just like this. So they're going to dive deep and, uh, and give you these results. So you can, again, James and I look at everything in, in, the, in the eye of content. So how can we take any, any data we get from Keeping Current Matters or anything that you get from the community or anything you get from Realtor.com or anywhere else? How can we turn that into video content or social media content uh, that will get us engagement from the consumer, right? Yes, and yes so, exactly. With a positive spin. Like e everything we put out is positive. So it doesn't, doesn't matter if this is, you know, kicking out what the news and all the other news stations are kicking out right now about how everything's terrible and the sky is falling. Everything comes out with a positive spin because this is a fantastic market for people to buy. Just it's a certain subset of people that this is a fantastic market for people to buy. 2021 was not a great market for first time home buyers. So, you know, this is a great market for a first time home buyer. So it doesn't matter what data it gives us, we're turning it into content and we're turning it into content with positive flavor on it. Yeah. So just to add on to that, you guys all know, you guys all follow a lot of real estate agents. You follow a lot of escrow officers, follow a lot of lenders. <laughs> and as you're scrolling through social media, you can tell those posts that are being made, they're in a negative fashion, right? And you got to put yourself in the mindset of the consumer who is on the fence if they're going to buy or not. So if they're looking at it from that mindset, like, okay, is now the right time to buy? If they come across a real estate agent that is keeping things a little bit negative and talking about where rates are at and talking about how the inventory sucks and how these next six months are going to be horrible or next year, um, or the last 18 months have been horrible. And then they come across another agent who's in your same market who's talking about how um, the benefits of being a homeowner in today's market, how first-time homebuyers are now able to buy where they weren't a year and a half ago, right? Um, who do you think that that, that consumer is going to gravitate more towards? Right? So keep everything positive. And I think that's one of the one of the reasons that James and I have been successful this, this you know, with our uptick in, uptick in uh, market share this last 13 months is because we keep everything positive. Uh, we don't talk about other lenders. We don't talk about um, about the market in a negative fashion whatsoever. So just try to keep everything positive. I think Jeff, <coughs> Jeff that, that's, that's really what's going to drive business to you is, uh, is keeping a positive mindset. Because again, the only two things that you can control are your attitude towards the market and your effort towards the market. That's it. Okay, this slide is just kind of a quick, you know, comparison of Chad GPT and Google Bard. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this one because we really, we really want to get into more of the of the of the what it can produce for you versus the you know the comparisons between the two. And again, you're going to have we're going to send out the slide deck to everybody so you'll be able to come back and compare the difference between each of the platforms. Um, so Travis, go ahead and go to the next slide. Not moving on my end. Yeah, I'm oh, there we are. Okay. Me, so I had a lag. Okay. All right. So now we're going to start to get in, into some of the ways that you can use it. And again, it's all wrapped around efficiency. Uh, it doesn't matter if you are a brand new agent. It doesn't matter if you are a, a seasoned agent. There are some of these examples would be something that you could potentially use um, as a brand new agent. Some of the stuff we'll show you will be, um, you know, we'll show you how to, that you can maybe uh, dial your stuff in a little bit more as, as a, you know, agent that's been in the business for a little bit. So, um, and again, it's all tied around efficiency. So Travis, go ahead and go to the next slide. Yes, yes, we'll talk about the, there's, a, there's a lot of ways that, that you can, um, you know, we know so many agents who sweat and stress over writing copy, right? So, you know, when they're, when they'd rather be doing the work of finding clients and helping them buy or sell homes, obviously that's what we're, we're in the business for. So I, obviously no bot can replace your voice or, or what a skilled, knowledgeable, motivated real estate agent can do for their clients. We, we all know that. Um, however, um, you know, you know, who, who would like to never have to write a listing description again? I mean, that's a lot of you probably, um, we just did this class with, you know, 30 agents last week, um, you know, on a, a live class and most, and, and I asked the question, how many of you take um, the listing script, listing description from another house that you did um, just the previous week or previous month or previous couple, quarter, and you just change the verbiage of that to, to make it fit? Well, you know, it's going to be super simple and we'll show you how to do that, where a lot of you are already probably doing that, where you are just taking the prompt of uh, in chat GPT and let them know like, hey, write me a listing description for a three bedroom, <laughs> three bath home in Salem, Oregon, near the parks in a great school district with a bonus room and a big backyard. And it will prompt everything out and write that listing description <laughs> for you, which is incredible. So we'll go into a little more details on that. So hey, real, chat, real quick, I saw a question pop up asking if Google bar, a bar to access the internet. Yes, it does. Yeah, so it's, it's incredible. Both of these programs are, are wonderful. 
James? Okay, so here's an example that we're going to ask uh, it, it to give us a listing description, right? So you know, Travis kind of laid one out, you know, but this one, for example, listing description for a house with a four bedroom, three bath, master suite with a, a jacuzzi tub, waterfall shower, uh, meditation room, a climbing wall, and a rooftop garden. So, so it's going to kick it out, and it, you guys, it kicks it out in seconds. It's crazy, crazy how fast it kicks it out. But here's the cool thing, Travis, go to the next slide. Okay, if you don't like what it kicked out, just say try again, and that's going to kick out an, another example, right? Or you could, or you could say instead of saying try again, you could say, okay, great, now uh, you know, add on, and you can just tell it to add something on. So you can you can just tell ChatGPT to correct it or make small changes to changes to it as you go. Um, so pr pretty pretty impressive and, and powerful how fast it'll kick that information out for you. Yes, here's another example that, that you know, in, in the prompt, you're going to say you're a real estate agent with a new listing, need to write an engaging property description. So here's the address. And it, it pulled up the address. I did it on my personal home the other day. Um, I said this exact same prompts and it pulled up all of the property profile data, um, you know, from, from you know, uh, Fatco or Fidelity or wherever, wherever it pulled up from. But it pulled up all the property data in, and put it into this description. Uh, so, so pretty crazy stuff. All right. I think this one's playable, Travis, to show them basically dumping that prompt into ChatGPT and what it will kick out for you. Yeah. So we'll go back and show you. So this is the previous the previous prompt that they gave. Right. And here's what ChatGPT did. You can kind of follow this video down here below. Just they just copy it, copy and paste it in, into chat. And in a half a second, it starts writing stuff, writing a listing description for that house. And you can also, so if you wanted to put this exact same listing description on social media, you could say, you know, you could say now, now write that, write that script and add in emojis. So that way it gets a little bit more reach, right? So, so now it can write that exact same script with putting emojis in there. And you can put that as a, as your comments in the comment section, or description section of a social media post <laughs> when you're hoping, hoping open house or you're, you're, you're promoting this new listing you just got. So you can add emojis in there, just have chat GPT do that for you. You can see how easy that is. Yeah, so so Jeff's right. You can also say, um, do this in under 800 characters. So that way it fits into the MLS restrictions, right? And all, all MLSs have maybe a little bit different restrictions. Um, and so you can you can you can trim that down and it'll do it easy for you. Super simple. Is it playing it again? Yeah, same one here. Let me get out of this one. So, so okay. Go ahead, James. Yeah, yeah. What all I was going to say is like there's there's other ways to gather this information as well, right? But Google Forms is a good way to send uh, you know document to your um, to your sellers to ask them the what are the features that they love about their home? What are the things that they would like featured about that home? So that when you're writing your prompt, you can make sure that you're um, asking it to write the uh, the things that your uh, sellers want to be featured about that home. So it'll include those for you. Okay, so so some of you may have done this, but how about asking ChatGPT to create an, an outline for a buyer consultation? And a lot of you probably already have your buyer consultations, right? <laughs> but but what if you could, you, we could copy and paste your buyer consultation into ChatGPT and, and have it uh, optimize it for you, have it, have it improve it for you, right? You can do those things. So... Uh, that this is an example of that. Let me get rid of this. Yeah, this this is one of those examples where we're saying, hey, if you're a brand new agent and you don't have this yet, great, ask ChatGPT to write one for you, get started. And and then just like Travis said, if you already have a consultation, throw it in there, see what Jet ChatGPT. Maybe you don't like what it does to it, but maybe it optimizes it for you in a way that you didn't think of before. So you know that's another great way to to leverage ChatGPT to improve a product you already have. Yeah, and keep in mind too that what you don't want to do is is you don't want to just ask it to do something, prompt it, and then you're you're going to just not proofread that, and you're just going to post it. You want to make sure you proofread it so it fits fits your your speaking style. It it, it speaks to you know it fits who you are as an agent, right? Because you may want to go in and change some things. Like, hey, I love bullet points one, two, three, six, and seven. Can you please change four, five, and eight? And just ask it to do things, and it'll do it for you, right? So pretty simple stuff. So. 
the question for you is so how you know if, if you have if you have an open house previews for neighbors i mean a lot of people will you know like when you do an open house you know you may, you may go around to the to the the neighborhood and say hey we're going to have an open house would you like to come view the house you do a lot of stuff but i mean but how does how does open house preview for your neighbors you know work um you know you invite the neighbors to preview the home and and well before it goes live to the world of course but here's how chat gpt can help with that so here's what the prompt we entered on this was in a casual but professional tone write a brief letter introducing a neighborhood property with a four bedroom three bath master suite with jacuzzi rooftop garden just 20 minutes outside the city and i want to invite the neighbors to an exclusive <clears throat> open house preview of the property saturday february 4th from four to six and end with a call to action for more information so show you what that looks like here so that was the prompt and here's what it did sorry i think it's playing here sorry guys And again, you guys will have copies of all these, so you can you can slow down and, and watch them. But here's a letter that that uh, Chad GPT wrote with the prompt that we talked about. It's going to go out to um, you can send this and drop it off to all the neighbors in, in the in the vicinity of the open house, talking about the property, um, having them come look at it, uh, to when the open house is. So you can you can send this to him via email, or you, um, you know, or, or I'm sorry, you can send it to him via you know regular snail mail, or you could just drop it off on their on their door form and and do a personal invite with the letter. Has anyone used this feature? Right in the chat, if you can, write down there in the chat box if you have used this feature. For <coughs> Go, ahead, James. Okay, so this is our favorite topic of this whole thing because this is you know what we use it for all the time. Like Travis said in our intro, we went all in on um, social media about 13 months ago. In fact, when we were kind of taking the step towards social media, we actually started out with the vision of a podcast. Uh, we still haven't. We, we've recorded a couple podcasts. Um, but we had some technical difficulties. We still haven't even posted um, a podcast because we started – getting so much traction with, um, you know, for us, it's Instagram, even though we post on all platforms, um, we get and started getting so much traction and so much um, buyer engagement through social media that we just went uh, and really hyper focused on on that. And so what, when we were first getting started, we had the same questions that a lot of people have, um, like, how do I start? What do I post? I, I'm just not sure what to do uh, just to get started. And so, um, I guess kind of how we started leveraging um, chat GBT to, to help us do that is that we all have just the common questions that we get all the time for you guys as, as real estate agents about either buying or selling a home inspections, appraisals, you know, what, you know, what's an FHA loan, what's a two, one buy down. Like we all get all these questions all the time, but we just aren't really, we don't feel confident in our creativity to turn those things into scripts and put it out on social media. So the awesome part about AI is that you can just post those questions to ChatGPT and just and and ask it to to you know create a thirty second script for you or uh, create a, a TikTok post for me about this topic or an Instagram reel about this topic and it's going to kick out. Not only is it going to kick out what you um, could talk about on it on the topic, which is crazy accurate. Like very few times have we decided we want to go in and change some of it, um, but. Uh, you can also, it also gives ideas about like scene cuts, like your opening scene is this, and then you say this, and then, and then you cut to this, and then you say this. And so it really takes the, um, that hurdle away of, you already know what to talk about because you get the questions all the time. So now just turn that into social content. Uh, Travis, go ahead and go to the next slide. All right. So, so, go ahead, James. Well, Yeah. I was actually just going to tell you to go to the next slide because it, it's going to start with a, a, a prompt for a post. But go ahead and say what you wanted to say. Yeah, no, go, no, yeah. So, so we're going to go over it into some detail. And again, what James said, this is this is a topic we love more than anything because we've we use Chat GPT and AI to really help us optimize what we love to do, which is social videos. And I I just put the the link into the chat box, so check that out. You guys can see what we've done over the last um 13 months. 
And it's, I want to take a minute to talk about this. It's absolutely <clears> helped <throat> us close more transactions. So we're about 49 transactions that we've closed in the last 12 months just off of using social video. That's not counting our regular referrals or repeat referral business that we get from, from our database. That's just that's just new business that we can attribute to um, doing social video. <clears throat> and AI has played a big role in that for us. Go ahead, James. Okay, so uh, the chat GPT prompt we're gonna ask, obviously here's on the screen that we're going to, um, uh, I'm not going to read to you, but uh, Travis, the next slide is the playable one, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and, and in this, because um, for whatever reason, emojis are really popular still on social media. So Travis, go back up to the slide before again. Right. So what it's referring to when we say now take this property description, it's referring to the property descriptions that we were um, talking about above for the listing descriptions, right? So now you've got your, your listing and now we're telling ChatGPT to take that property description and turn it into Instagram uh, post. And and then you see there at the bottom where we're telling it, by the way, give us the relevant hashtags and emojis that uh, to go along with it. So it literally just becomes copy and paste over to your social media, make a couple of changes and you're done. And, and in the class that we did live for this, um, where we had about 30 plus agents in the room, we, um, we basically asked for a volunteer and uh, you know Casey uh, raised her hand Thank goodness, because I was going to have to do it in front of everybody, which actually I love. So that wouldn't have been bad. But um, and so we said, hey, what is the question you get all the time? And she said, OK, well, the question I get all the time is what's the, what's the difference between um, a, an appraisal and an inspection? So we so we just asked Chad GPT that question. It kicked us out a script. We had her come up in front of the class. We filmed her um, recording that script, which took about two minutes to film. And then we edited it in CapCut, which took me about five minutes to edit in CapCut. And so in less than 10 minutes, we had um, a, a post idea that ChatGPT created a script for us that we recorded and edited and was ready to post. And so um, leveraging these tools really take away that, um, I'm going to call it an excuse of, I don't have the time to do it, or I'm not sure what to do, because it's all provided for you if you just know what uh, you know, tools to use to get those things done. So um, now that I've uh, went way down that rabbit hole, Travis, go ahead and go to the next slide and, and let's see what it kicks out for this uh, Instagram post. So again, we told it to just use uh, some relevant hashtags and emojis. All right, cool. So now my video is done. I've edited it. I'm ready to post it. I'm posting my video. I'm copying and pasting this into my description proofreading it, making a couple of changes to put my, you know, my flavor on it, the way that I talk and, and I, and I'm posted. And uh, when we do these, we'll, we'll record uh, five to 10 of these a piece and we'll get them all knocked out and saved into our, our drafts on Instagram so that we, so that, you know, we're basically taking care of, you know, we're using half a day to, to have another about, you know, two to three weeks of content ready to post. Yeah. So right now I probably have, 40 different drafts in my Instagram draft, you know, uh, area that I'm ready to post. So I've already went in and done all of this relevant, uh, the hashtags and the emojis and the, and the description. I've already done all those things and they're just sitting in my drafts ready to post. We, we try to post three things a day. Uh, so that's not including, uh, you know, just three regular reels a day. We don't, I would try to try to post uh, stories and that stuff as well, but, but we try to get three relevant, good, reels up a day that will drive engagement and content for us. Yep, exactly. Um, so, okay. So here on the next slide, so we've talked a lot about, you know, Instagram, we, we do post on TikTok and Facebook as well. Instagram just happens to be right now where we're getting most of our business from. Um, we're also posting on YouTube shorts because YouTube sh uh, shorts is starting to blow up and YouTube is, you know, the second biggest search engine uh, available on the internet. Right. And so, Really, what we're spending this next year focusing on is maintaining our, uh, you know, short form presence, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and then starting to ramp up our YouTube long form content because there's so much business to be had there and it's so much easier to find people on there. So this is gonna, this here is an example of you don't have to be an expert in any particular city like, you know, I mean, heck, 
you know, I live in Salem, Oregon, and people ask me, uh, you know, what there is to do. I live here, and I'm always like, oh, I don't, I don't really know. Uh, go visit somewhere else, honestly. But uh, that's not what I want to say in my in my uh, social media post because if someone's moving to the area, I want to sound like the expert of this area. So you can plug in. So on this example, right, three engaging social media posts highlighting the top five benefits of living in Henderson, Nevada. Now, insert name of, of city and state that you want to, um, you know, in your surrounding area. And it's going to give you all of really great information that you can now take that information. You can go go make a long form um, YouTube video about living in that town. Um, even if you know nothing about that town, it's it's awesome. Yes, as you can see here, it just it just it just threw out you know five six different bullet points of what the benefits of living in this particular city. And again, you can insert any city you want in here. So it's yeah. giving you five different posts with about five or six different bullet points that you can now post. So this is something cool. You can go around and and just get some B roll footage from your phone of you driving around, you know, Salem or or Puerto Rico, or wherever you're at, and you can and you can just get some relevant. Uh, video content and then just post this in the description and 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 one of the other things too again we keep talking about like continuing to pull the thread so now it just gave you this information and like number one thriving arts and culture scene immerse yourself in the creativity um uh, you can say okay now tell me you know what are the art galleries and theaters in henderson nevada and, it, and it's going to pull that string a little bit further you know for you so now you can now you can highlight some of those particular uh you know places under that sub bullet so it's super easy to, to take this information and then go turn it into like a 10 to 15 minute uh, 10 to 15 minute youtube video uh, establishing yourself as the local expert of what it uh, is like to live in insert name in town here so it, it this this part is super powerful this is the part that i'm the most excited about um leveraging moving forward i guess we're going to maintain like i said our short form content but we're really going to start hitting this long form long form content hard using this strategy. Yep. So we've talked about those too. So um, there's definitely a, a, hey James, can you, can you find, if you can, uh, what was the name of the, of the, uh, the guy in Northern Arizona, sorry, Northern Idaho? Is it a living yeah, life uh, yeah. Idaho? <clears throat> um, yeah, that's, living shoot. life in North Idaho. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You guys can jump onto YouTube and, and go follow him. He's a real estate agent who's doing quite a bit of business right now. And, he changed his the way that he does the way he does his business um, to just um, highlighting certain towns and areas of northern Idaho, and it's been huge for him. He has a massive following, <laughs> and real estate agents that are that have clients moving to northern <clears throat> Idaho, they send their business to him. They refer him because he he is the be all end all and, and of knowledge when it comes to northern Idaho. And all he's done <laughs> is do what James just kind of said, just taking some. <laughs> some of the uh, you know use chat GPT to help him um, know what's going on in certain cities. He goes and gets some B-roll footage of it, talks about the city, and he's created a pretty cool following and it does a, a ton of business uh, with in his real estate side because of it. Yeah, and here's the cool thing, guys. I have no idea if this guy's a brand new real estate agent or <clears throat> if he's been a real estate agent for 20 years. And the, that's the awesome part about social media and something that Travis and I talk about a lot. Your uh, visibility is is don't harpoon me for this okay your visibility is more important than your ability and why do i say that well it doesn't matter how much you know about all the laws and regulations and rules and and uh you know the ins and outs of, of being a real estate agent and how to help your clients if you aren't getting in front of them so um, we are seeing people with less than five years experience actually absolutely just blow up because they are becoming visible so if you are somebody has a ton of, of ability that is great now start becoming visible and and social media is where it's at it's where buyers are consuming their information right now yeah does anybody know who the the number one um number one group of of consumers or buyers are right now right in the chat if you know <clears throat> Yeah, so millennials. So you guys all know that millennials aren't a lot. A lot of millennials they're not coming to us because their grandfather or their uncle referred them. And it happens occasionally, but they're doing their own research for everything, and they're finding that on YouTube Shorts, they're finding it on Instagram, they're finding it on on TikTok. 
they're not just going out and just Googling, you know, Salem, Oregon, mortgage lender, Salem, Oregon, real estate. They're, they're like following people, you know, in the realms that they're on. So they're on TikTok, they're on YouTube shorts, they're on YouTube long form, they're <clears> on, <throat> and they're on, uh, you know, on meta, but mainly they're on uh, Instagram on that platform. So, so that's where people are consuming um, our content, right? And so that's where they're coming to learn more about certain products, uh, certain housing markets, uh, they're learning more about you as a as a professional. So if you're on there, great. Now you need to do the things that you should be doing to promote yourself in a, in a in a value driven way, where you're adding value to the to the consumer, not just selling, selling, selling. Because if, if you add value, people will remember that, right? They're gonna be you're gonna be top of mind when the time does come for them to buy a house. Again, it's not like they're it's not like you're selling groceries and people need to buy groceries three times a week. You're selling real estate. So they only need you when they need you, which is probably going to be, you know, once every three to six years or so, if, if we're lucky, right? Um, so so you have to be top of mind and irrelevant with them when that time comes. So the only way to do that is to to manage your database and continue to to uh to nurture that. But manage and nurture your social media and do video content and do things that are relevant to the consumer because they're re when they're ready to buy they want people that are that are uh, positive about the market and that are top of mind with them yep okay so let's keep pulling that youtube string a little bit because again that's what we're super excited to start leveraging so the the um question that we asked chat gpt right you it's been up on the screen for a little bit but essentially um, with our, the criteria of your area, right? What are the relevant keywords that you would use to get your videos to show up on YouTube? So go ahead to the next screen. So when, and then it's gonna kick you out this list. And so in this list, you wanna make sure that you are uh, either talking about these things in your video or they are in your description of your video so that when someone goes and searches for these key YouTube results, it's gonna drive them to your channel. And then this can be the same for Instagram as well. So you want to put keywords in there. Um, hashtags kind of still work, but mainly they're the keywords that, uh, that people are searching for. And this is it. And for those of you who don't know, um, YouTube was bought by Google years ago. And YouTube is the number two most searchable um, platform in the United States, maybe in the world, right? So Google's number one, YouTube's number two. So that's why you need to focus on the YouTube platform, especially the short form and long long form. But, but the consumer can go into YouTube and and they can search for these keywords, right? And if you have that keyword in your in your description, you're going to show up. That video is going to populate for them to watch. So that's really important stuff. So, so here's a prompt asking ChatGPT to create a script for a YouTube video on how to stage a home for a quick sell. So as a real estate agent, I want to create a YouTube video on how to stage your home for a quick sell. I need a script that will educate my audience on the importance of home staging and provide tips on how to do it effectively. So this is what it spit out for them in about uh, three seconds. So pretty simple um, way to get a script on video um, on, on, you know, basically decluttering your house and getting it ready, ready to, to list. So can you guys see the value? If you can just make a note in the, in the, uh, in the chat box, like, do you see the value of doing, of using AI in your business? And the bigger question is, how many of you are going to start new, start using it, right? You guys just got back from, what was it, Jeff, EXP, EXP Con, right? Is that what it's called? So a lot of you were there. Um, <laughs> and, and that was probably that was probably the number one topic was AI I, and the way that you can utilize it in your business. I'm, I'm guessing it probably was. Um, it is in everything else that we do, right? Yeah, it, it's showing up a lot right now. And and what's been interesting as well is you can kind of create a full automation cycle in your business. I mean, it sounds like mm -hmm. you guys are leveraging a lot of this. I'm I'm curious kind of what your step-by-step -step is because I was hanging on there and then it it's like we didn't quite go the distance. So, or maybe I missed it, which is possible. 
So you guys are doing the script using ChatGPT, then you're taking the script for like, let's say a short form video. This would be for more, more like reels or YouTube shorts, anything that's gonna be quick consumption and then it, it gets lost in the, in the matrix, right? And just for anyone who's kind of new to this, long form video content on YouTube is stuff that's gonna be relevant a year or two years from now. That's, that's how you need to be thinking. If it's relevant today, do it as a short or do it as a reel, do it as something that's quick consumption because that's social media style. The rest of YouTube is really a search engine. So it needs to be like best neighborhood in my town, in my opinion, that's something that'll be relevant a year from now. But my listing from yesterday is not going to be relevant, hopefully a year from now. Uh, so, <laughs> so you want to you want to think differently about those. But I'm just curious, as you're as you're doing this, so you guys create the script using ChatGPT. Are you sending that somewhere? Are you guys narrating yourselves? Are you um, having something else generate all that B-roll? Are you filming it yourselves? Yeah. What's your compilation strategy on that? And also, are you using AI for um, for captions? So, so yes, Travis. Um, I'll talk about it for a minute. If I, if you want to pull up our our YouTube or uh, YouTube page, our uh, our Instagram page, Travis. Yep. And we can show some of like the 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 um, videos that we've recorded from the scripts we make. But essentially, yes. Yeah, so we so we get all of our scripts made um, uh, using ChatGPT for the most part, and then we'll print all those scripts out. We usually go in the room with about five to ten scripts, um, so that we can each do about five videos. And then what we'll do is we hit record on our phone. We use our phone to record everything, and uh, we, we, uh, we don't hit start, stop, start, stop, start, stop for each line. Right. Um, I'll stay looking at the camera if I'm the one recording the video and Travis will read me one line at a time. And then I'll, I'll say it a couple of times until I like how I said it and got it right. And then he'll move on to the next line and we'll just keep going down the script until I've basically read every line correctly. And then, then what we do is I take that video and then I open it up in cap cut. And then we edit out all the mistakes and all the dead space and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and again, CapCut has its own AI that will actually eliminate a lot of the dead space for you to speed up your editing. Um, we add all of our captions in CapCut because it does it, it does it for us um, and has all sorts of awesome transitions and, um, you know, abilities for the, uh, you know, text. There's just so many different, um, you know, options for your text in CapCut. Um, so we'll add everything in CapCut. The, um, sometimes we'll embed our music in CapCut, but most of the time that we we're just using trending um, instrumental music on Instagram, so we can kind of piggyback, uh, you know, on those trending like songs, if you will. Um, but then, uh, so yeah, that's it. So um, again, we'll we'll I, I would say cradle the grave on um, getting a script uh, to recording it and and editing it is you know ten to fifteen minutes. Yeah, we actually did one the other day, Jeff, in, in the class that we were in. Can you guys see can you guys see my screen right now? Uh are we still on? Well, I see the slide deck. Yep. Yep. Okay. I want to show let me see if I can get out of the slide deck and show you something else here. Well, I saw our page a second ago and then it went away. So strange. Okay, sorry guys. But James, can you talk while I'm looking for that? Can you talk about what we did the other day? I mean, we went when we did we did that video with, with Casey, it was basically 10 minutes from start to start to finish. Yeah, correct. We, yeah, from start to finish with Casey in front of a live audience. So I just had my phone, uh, you know, displayed on the on the the TV so they can watch me edit it in in CapCut. Um, again, there's a lot of different tools that you can use. I just um, I I love CapCut because I can follow my wife around Nordstroms and edit videos while she's shopping. It's awesome, um, but it's it's super easy to use. And after you've played with it for a little bit and started to kind of figure out what your editing style is and the font that you want that you want to use and all that kind of stuff, it just it really speeds up. I would say my first couple videos that I did in CapCut while I was trying to um, A, learn how to use it and B, just kind of like fall in love with a certain um, you know, font style or the way that uh, the color of the of the um, of the text or how the text you know came into the screen. I probably spent, you know, 20 to 30 minutes editing a video. Um, but now, you know, I mean, I'm I'm five to ten minutes on a video edit tops. Okay, awesome. Can you, can you guys see my screen now, James? Can you see our our page? Yep, I see it. Okay. So we're gonna go to one of these. We're gonna show you what this looks like. And so you know, a, a lot of the scripts that we we do write, um, but a lot of them we get from a program we belong to. But but uh, yeah, we we use AI to do scripts, and we come up with our own scripts. So here's one that uh, that we 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 re we wrote. Um, we recorded 
and edited in probably about 20 minutes total of work. So uh, hopefully you guys can hear the video. I'll play it here. To buy real estate with a small down payment and with no monthly mortgage insurance. It's called single premium mortgage insurance, and it will allow you to have a lower monthly payment and qualify for more of a house. When you make an offer on the property, you can ask the seller to give you a credit to cover this cost and build it into the deal. So let's say you're buying a house for $450,000 and you're putting 5% down, which would equate to $22,500. For a conventional loan, depending on your credit, you will pay anywhere from $140 to $240 a month for mortgage insurance. But you can choose to pay just one premium at closing, approximately $7,500, and eliminate the monthly private mortgage insurance requirement from the loan. Most buyers don't. Could you guys hear that okay? Yep. Okay, awesome. So so that's, that's just an example of a couple of the videos that we do that's just so simple to do. We, again, it's probably 15 minutes, but what James and I do is we'll, we'll go into the studio. We have, uh, you know, two different rooms that we record in here. We will go in and we will um, batch record. So he'll do five or six videos and I'll do five or six videos. And then we'll just turn those over to our editor who's in here in the office. Uh, we used to edit everything, but it was time consuming for us. And we you know we do we do home loans. We need to focus. Well, on well Travis, let me piggyback on that. Yep. It became it became time consuming for us because we started to get so busy from our social media right. that we we had to shift our gears to what we were spending our time, you know, sitting down with clients. But we wanted our social media that was bringing us the business to keep moving. So we hired an editor to take over for us. Right. So that, I think that's kind of the important note there. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we got too busy to do it on our own. So so now we just send everything to our editor who's again, he's in the office here, um, does like twenty five dollars a video or something. So it's super, super easy for us. And we don't have to worry about the editing portion anymore, which which was the most time consuming. But as we've as James and I have learned this last probably, you know, two or three weeks, there's it. CapCut is making things so easy for you to edit on your phone. And, uh, you know, we can we can meet with you guys individually if you want or do another session like this. Where we talk about just video and the way that we are editing things and, and the way that we're doing marketing. So we wouldn't talk much about AI. We just talk about the way that we are 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 using um, you know uh, social media as a way to get more business. So, so you can also use it uh, AI technology in in your emails, in your text messages, in your team communication, um, how you assign tasks to to your team, uh, listing presentations as we as we spoke about. Hey Travis, uh, just real quick, just because I'm not sure what we're, what our time constraint is for this presentation. Right. Um, so I just want to make sure we're being mindful of that. Again, everybody's going to get these slides. So if we do have to, you know, kind of cut early on some of this stuff, um, you know, we're, we're essentially just showing more. OK, OK, great. Thanks, Jeff. OK, yes, because we're just going to basically show you know, more ways to leverage the social media to create products for you um, just in, in all sorts of different facets. All right. Travis, go ahead. Yeah. So so here's an example that uh, have you ever sat down to write an email and your and your mind just goes blank on what you're going to talk about? Well, you know you can use Chat GPT for that too. So uh, you know get acquainted with the possibilities by trying any of the following scripts that we're going to talk about here. So um, you know this is for example uh, subject subject lines for project perspective home buyers uh, sellers looking to relocate and create an email to help buyers prepare for moving day. By the way, just so you guys know, you guys are probably seeing the same data from Redfin. But 20, I think it's 24% of all new buyers or are all, are all sellers, when they sell their house, they're going to be moving out of state. So keep that in mind when you're looking, when you're thinking about what your, you know, what your niche is, your niche may be um, that you're going to, you're going to do a lot of relocation. Um, you're going to take on that relocation business that comes to you, to your state or your area, because 24% of people who are looking to buy their new house or buy a house. Is going to do it in the state that they're not living in right now. So that was from Redfin about about a month ago. So let's go and move on to this slide here. So yeah, next ne next slide is basically just an example of a you know a letter where we asked Chat GPT to say, hey, create an, a, an email to help buyers prepare for moving day. So you know again, this is all through the lens of efficiency uh, and and be able to to be more efficient with your time so you can be out doing the activities that are you know your money makers. Yep. 
Yeah, great point. So here's an, here's an example of a listing presentation. Again, if you already have a listing presentation, great. But maybe just have them optimize it or, or, or find find ways that maybe you can improve your listing presentation. Um, you know, if you can if you can improve your listing presentation just 10%, you know, that means obviously one out of your 10 listing presentations, you may get that listing, right? Just that just that small percentage of of improvement on your presentation may get you, you know, five or six more listings per year. So keep that in mind. So they're asking for, you know, this is they need an outline for listing presentation. And you're going to have it like like 10 seconds. So this is what he did. Uh, That's what we're doing. So uh, the prompt would be, let's say, for example, write an outline for a professional real estate listing presentation. And then you're ready to go. Let's see if I'll go here. And here, here's the introduction. Um, it's, it's a well-structured professional listing presentation outline with proper structure, talking points, and suggestions. Um, but we're only scratching the surface of, of that part here. Um, We'll skip through this part here. Yeah, go ahead and skip to the uh, writing effective prompts, Travis, because this the next yeah. few slides are just how to yep. sign up for Chat GPT. Yep, yep. So go ahead, James. Right. So, so writing the effective prompts, you know, again, we kind of touched on a little bit, but it, it just kind of helps um, establish the tone of the way you want the result to kick kick out for you. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, the prompts are important because it's going to give like the 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 keywords and phrases. And from the perspective of the way that you that you ask it to write it, so depending on how you want your scripts to come out, that's going to be you know pretty important. Um, so the the next slide here's here's Chat GPT's answer on how to write effective prompts. Right, keep it concise, be clear about what you want. Don't get too wordy in in what you're asking it to do. Um, you know, avoid ambiguity. Specify context. Use open ended prompts be specific and then test the prompts, right? And then the great part is you can just tell it to try again if you don't like what it kicked out. Um, next slide. We've hit on this a lot, right? Using the act as um, to uh, to have it come out from the voice of a real estate agent when it's kicking out the information that you want it to give you. And then the next slide, um, you'll be able to reference this back, but is, this is just a quick, um, I guess, reference, right? To um, include ideas to help you with, you know, cases, prompt ideas, audience suggestions, uh, you know, different stuff like that when you're when you're in the 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 app um, asking it to kick out some content for you. Yes, yeah, so this is one you're definitely going to want to print out. So this part of the slide, uh, obviously, you can relate back to this one quite often, but print this one, this this portion out, this page out, because it's really going to help you with, uh, you know, with talking about the tone of your voice um, and and uh, you know the act as as James mentioned before will really be helpful for you. And if you're really feeling brave, right, you can tell it to then take your script that it just gave you and make a rap song out of it. <laughs> so there are some people blowing up with that. We haven't tried it yet, but <laughs> I don't know that we will. But no. <laughs> if any, anybody out there wants to uh, try their hand at yeah, rapping your scripts, it'll do it for you. So these are all things we we can help you guys with later. But so 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 what's next? So AI is changing the way that we that, that we can create content and search. Uh, the impact of AI, including Jack, GPT, and, and Bard, our online real estate lead generation is undeniable. I mean, the things that they're doing to to uh, to help our industry is incredible. Um, again, people are going to seek uh, the the guidance of a local uh, competent real estate professional to help them navigate the home buying process, right? So they so they want. I mean, people want to use local, right? Um, we're trying to keep stop people from using Rocket Mortgage all the time, um, but they do a great job marketing. But we want to, you know, to just keep it local where people either you know, like, and trust are in your community. And, you know, using social media and AI to help you uh, get that point across is huge. Um, so most importantly, I, the big fear that a lot of people have is, am I going to be replaced by AI? Um, the answer is no. Um, the only one who... It may be on the verge of being replaced by AI and our whole industry um, may be the, the appraiser at some point because of the way that we can do um, automated appraisals based on the data that, that's in there, right? Um, there's still going to be appraisers, right? But but the way that they do business is really going to change. Um, it's not going to change for real estate agents or lenders. Like the, the, People still need that personal touch uh, from us. So remember, the two most important things are the prompts that you put into ChatGPT. Um, it's kind of like um, 
us with with um, loan officers. You guys probably heard this from a loan officer before, but when we put a file, we send a file to the underwriter. It's like garbage in, garbage out. If we send a garbage file in that's not set up right, that doesn't have everything they need, our approval is going to be pretty garbage. They're going to need a lot of stuff, right? So it's the same thing with your prompts. Um, make sure that your prompts are, um, you know, are dialed in and you're asking it the right thing. So that way it can give you the right data in return. So I, uh, you know, hopefully today was valuable for you. Um, again, we didn't go into detail on a lot of stuff because we have time constraints, but we do have um, the ability to go in a lot deeper with you guys if you want. And again, I, of course, James and I do loans, but we are not, um, we don't push the loan side. Um, we just want to help and add value to anything you guys need. So Thank you, Travis good. and James. I know what was really helpful for Casey and I at um, when you did the presentation last week um, was actually showing us firsthand how to do things and just giving us the first steps, like just, you know, step one, because there's always a lot of a lot of information and in how to and how to get started. And it feels very overwhelming. And I know that um, the first thing was have a phone with your so you can record yourself and have a camera of yourself and not to get so detailed on where you're at with um you know where you're where you're actually at is just get the phone use the phone um because you had uh you had mics you had lighting you had lots of different things going on there but um to get things started j even today just to walk away today without having to go purchase anything because we all have a phone in hand you know what is that first step the first step was the phone having maybe cap cut having your instagram account that kind of a thing, just a quick step of go put in a script, say it on on there and load it up. Um, however, the mics that you did have were very helpful. And I think um, Jeff put it in the, the chat in here. And that mic was specifically used um, to block out all the noise around you. I, um, you guys started using that in which applications? Yeah, so we use, again, yeah, just to, just to, to... Touch on that again. You don't need, we probably have $7,000, $8,000 worth of stuff here um, with the, with lighting and and mics and all that stuff. Um, you don't need it. Like we, we only use those for the podcast and for recording in our studio. Uh, you guys can get started with um, just your iPhone or your, or your Android that have phenomenal cameras. So one thing to keep in mind though, is if if you have your phone farther away than, than arm's length, then you're going to need to use a microphone. We use the Hollyland mics, and uh, you can find those on on uh, on uh, Amazon for relatively cheap, um, like $150. But they're incredible mics. So again, if you're going to have your phone farther than arm's length, then you need to have a microphone because the number one thing that keeps that lets people just keep scrolling. Is, it, is if your audio is not good, they're gonna just bypass you and not watch the video at all. So I'd say that's gonna be number one. Uh, number two is gonna be um, your video, right? So just make sure you have natural light coming in. And again, we have the best natural light source in the world just outside of our of our windows, right? So go outside, um, go by a window. Um, yeah, thanks for putting that in the, in the chat, Jeff. But that's the, make sure that you grab the one, if you have an Android, the four of you on here that do, make sure that you, uh, that you go ahead and get the one that's for the Android because there's two different attachments, right? So make sure you do that. But yeah, so uh, you don't need a lot of equipment to get started. We got started with just an iPhone, a mic, and a, and a light stand. That's it. And, and we still record everything with, besides our podcast, we record everything with our with our phone, right? The, the back-facing cameras, right? So we film everything with that. And then we do, we bought two really great cameras for our, for our sons and we use them for uh, James, James bought one for his son. I bought one for my son. And then we, but we borrow them when we do our podcast. So they're great Sony's, but yeah, again, you don't need a whole lot. Um, so the apps that we use, um, CapCut Pro is going to be about, uh, I think it's about $8 a month for that. Um, so we use CapCut a ton. Um, we also use, um, uh, the, what's called the repost app. 
R-E-P-O-S-T. And that one costs about $2.99 a week. So it's about $12 a month, but it's well worth it. Um, and what we use, use that one for is, is we can take B-roll from any clip we see on TikTok or on, uh, well, repost is just for the, uh, just for Instagram, but there's one for TikTok as well. But we can take B-roll from anything we see on, on Instagram and, and use that in our next video. Or more importantly, um, if we if we do something on Instagram and it's going to have our, our watermark on there and we want to post it to YouTube Shorts or post it to somewhere else, we can download it with the repost app. And then we can take that video and post it now to TikTok, now to YouTube Shorts, to to X or Twitter, wherever we want to post it at without having that Instagram watermark on there. Because that's something that those platforms don't do well. They don't communicate well and they don't want things that are made on Instagram being put on TikTok and vice versa. So that allows us to do that. So we have that app, um, the CapCut app. If James, you're still on here, what app, other apps do we use that are really relevant to today? I think you guys were also using the teleprompter app. Yeah, so we so teleprompter app is a great one too. That one, I think that one cost me like, I don't know what it was, maybe it's 10 bucks a month. But that's great because if I'm if I'm sitting down with a, if I'm recording things by myself, um, the teleprompter would be right here. Let me see if I can show you guys real quick. So, so here's a teleprompter app. I can go in and pick any script I want that I've uploaded, press play. And let's see. So it'll do, give me a countdown and then it will start just talking about the 10 myths of home buying a home in the, it's the biggest one. You know, it's your, the biggest one is that it keeps most people from owning a, a home, right? So, this is this is great because I can have the the forward facing camera record me from you know three feet away, and now I can just read read the screen, and that's great because I, if I don't have anybody who's giving me the script, and this keeps my eyes looking right at the camera as well, right? So the teleprompter. James, which app one is, is that one? Irving Travis. What's that? What was that teleprompter app? Is that what that's called? Yeah, okay. yeah that's called teleprompter, and I think it's like ten bucks a month. I think, yeah, I think Jeff just put it in there. Uh, but but that's a it's a great way to we want to take away all the barriers of entry to doing video right so we all have excuses I'm 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 going to be honest when I tell you guys this that that James and I 13 months ago were scared to death of doing video like we were scared I mean there's not too many I'm 47 James is James 46 or so like we're old like. So, but for us to jump into social media at our age, well, I was like, man, that's a little daunting. I mean, I've been on social media forever, but I've never done video. I stutter a lot. Um, so it, it was tough for me to, to overcome that barrier of entry and want to do this, right? But I knew we had to do it. I knew it was going to change the way that we do business. It's going to change the way that consumers find us. Um, so I knew it was going to be huge for us if we just went all in. And I think we're, as of today, we have 421 reels that we have made just on Instagram alone in, in 13 months. So, I mean, and just the last probably month and a half, we've been averaging three per day. So we're all in on it. And that's just, that's just on Instagram. We've done tons of YouTube shorts, tons of uh, Facebook, tons of uh, TikTok. And so we probably, we're probably well over 12 to 1300 uh, videos on social media in the last, last 13 months. And again, it has changed the way that we do business. Uh, Kimmy asks, uh, which was the chat GPT for the Mac? Um, you can you can still use, it's just regular chat GPT. It's it's good for the iOS or or the, uh, you know, or a Dell computer. So it works both ways. Hopefully that answers your question there. So. Hey, Travis. Yep. I had a question. I mean, one, I want to really thank you guys for coming on and sharing what you're doing. But one of the things I wanted to try and even hear more is that you were scared in the beginning and a lot of those videos you probably weren't really like thrilled with you were maybe even embarrassed about but you put them out anyways and you got better could you talk a little bit through that because i think everybody thinks if they don't do it right in the first two weeks they just give up or they're embarrassed that, oh if i put out one video that looks stupid it's going to screw my whole business up yeah. right or yeah. it's going to make my business worse could you walk through that like how you just work through that pain and you realize, God, I look like an idiot. Maybe you never did, but you know, you felt like you did. And yet 
people didn't freak out about it. People did. You probably got encouragement from people, even when you did videos that you thought were crappy. Could you walk through that? Just because I think that's people. There's just so much fear to change. And there's so much fear that I have to be good at something right away. And they forget that, that they didn't ride a bike. You know, most people didn't just get up on their bike right away. They crashed yeah. a lot of times and yet they kept going. Yeah, that, that's the that's a, the biggest obstacle, John. You're right. That that, But you guys have probably heard this in many different aspects of life, but done is better than perfect. Right. So doing something and getting it done is so much better than doing it perfect. Because, again, we're we're 1200 videos in. We haven't had a perfect video yet. And Travis, the- Travis, let me share my uh, story on the first day we were starting. I think that would be okay. relevant yeah. to what he's asking, right? So we got all of our equipment. We were setting everything up for our first, you know, video. We were sound checking it. Um, and, uh, and so I sat down. Travis was reading me the script. Uh, we recorded it. And after we re- recorded it, we watched it. And I was like, oh, Travis, we have to move the light to the other side that the light is high- you know, highlighting my, my right ear. And my right ear is bigger than my left ear. And it just really looks like it's sticking out in the video. And Travis looks at me, he goes, James, we've been friends for 15 years and I've never noticed that your right ear sticks out further than your left ear, right? So the point is, you everybody is their own biggest critic about what you think you look like or sound like. Oh my, I look silly, I look stupid. I sound dumb, whatever. Like, just, just do the video, just do it. You look like what you look like. You sound like what you sound like. It is what it is. Just post them. Uh, and and you'll get better and you'll improve and you'll you'll master the craft as you as you get going. But just get started. And we talk you know, about guys. This have all you the also time. been blown away? Have you been blown away that the video that you thought was going to be great didn't get a lot of activity? Yeah. And the ones that you didn't think were going to be that good were your biggest videos. Have you found that to be true or some combination of that? One one hundred percent. I I had a, a our, one of our biggest videos was my dog closing the door. She she can close her own doors. She gets up and close them. Like that was our biggest video, but our second biggest video. We've had some well over 100,000, but but th- there were stupid videos. They're like, how did that go viral? But again, one thing you need to remember, don't, and you're going to you're gonna get caught up in it for the first six months, but stop caring about the views. You want to, you want to, you should care about the engagement, the comments, the engagement, the shares, the DMs that you get from that. That's where the business is at. The the gold and the money for for you, the income is in the engagement, not in the views. Because you could care less if somebody from Indonesia saw your video about a house on one two three Main Street. They're not buying it, right? You care about more about the engagement and and the 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 view. Uh, sorry, and the uh, the DMs you're going to talk about. But you know, to talk more about what what on James' point about just getting getting through that, right? We say this a lot. If you guys had, if you got a call from a borrower in five minutes, they told you, hey, I want to see that vacant house over on Main Street and I can be there in a half an hour and I'm paying cash, I'm ready to go. What do you, are you going to say, you know, sorry, I need to grow my beard out a little bit more. I need to shave. I need to lose five pounds. My hair's not done yet. No, you're going to throw on your EXP hat. You're going to, you're going to, Throw it, brush your teeth real quick, throw out some deodorant, and you're out the door. Like it's the same thing with video. Just just go all in on it and do it. Again, we can go back and look at our first first videos, and people love them. We got a lot of, of good comments, a lot of engagement from it. But we look back on it now, and it was just 12 months ago. We look back now and go, wow. Like our lighting was bad. We looked red. Um, the mic was too far away. Uh, you know. I, you know, we looked horrible, whatever, but you know, we still, we still leave those up because it's content and you can see the growth that we had, um, from, from day one to, you know, to day 390. It's just, it's just huge. And we said this all the time too, but we, we're only a couple, we're only six months ahead of you guys. That, like, that's it. Like, don't think that there's this big cavern between where, where you guys are at right now and where James and I are at this it's not that far, right? You just got to devote it. And let's be honest, these next six or 12 months, hopefully not 12 months, are going to be a little bit slower for you. You have time to invest. And what is the number one investment you can make in your business? Anybody know that? You. 
investing in yourself is the number one investment you can make. And so find out the, the couple of things that you need to work on, that you need to work on and invest in those things. And for us, it for James and I, it was video. And so we knew we had to make a change and we went all in on that. You know, uh, Travis, one of the things that I heard, actually, John, you spoke about this recently was kind of this concept that in the next, let's even say, let's let's roll out past six months, right? In the next 12 to 24 months, people who are dominating in the digital landscape with video in particular are going to win the day. Um, and we're just seeing that it's becoming more and more obvious and you have to win in two ways. It's got to be quick content, meaning the, the snacks, snacks are reels. They're, they're the quick stuff that's on social media when you're doing this or this or whatever. I don't, I don't know how it all works. Right. But also you need long form content, which is a longer video, eight minutes on YouTube that describes uh, how a neighborhood works or what a park looks like, or the best coffee shops in this area, or why this one area is, you know, um, really trending or whatever gentrification over here, all that stuff is going to be relevant longer and that's how you're going to be found and some people think this takes forever for it to start working it doesn't i mean that that's what's so interesting is once your content becomes kind of validated and the algorithm starts seeing you being consistent in the platform suddenly you start showing up and we had a few weeks ago we actually had a 67 year old guy on here who's in our group travis he put together a youtube channel that honestly is okay. Um, and he even would be the first to say it. He's like, I don't know everything. It's fine. It does what it, he only has 5,000 subscribers. He's doing like 40, 48 deals a year just from that. He's got other business too coming in. So it's like, dude, this is exactly, and he's number three, I think on, on social or on YouTube right now in Phoenix, Arizona um, at 67. He, yeah. he had to figure it out. It's like, turn on my phone, you know, like he's, and he's, he's always uh, kind of self-deprecating. It's hilarious, but he figured it out. It's not that complicated. Guess where you can learn it on YouTube. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. And the funny thing is I just put in there opus.ai. So I want to talk about that real quick, Jeff, because you mentioned long form content. So YouTube long form, regular YouTube, where you, where you record it, you know, you record it like this, right? You're recording this way. This is, this is YouTube long form. This is YouTube shorts, right? Just like a real. But what you can do is you can take a 10 or 15 minute long form video from YouTube, <clears throat> put it into Opus AI or Opus Connect or whatever the, the exact wording is, but it's Opus AI. And it will take that 10 minute video and break it down into eight to 12 different uh, shorts. And it'll put captions on there for you. It'll it'll give you the, vi the virality score. So like, hey, this is a 99 out of 100 this is going to be a good clip for you to put in, in YouTube shorts or put in, in reels. And so again, all you have to do is go record a 10 minute uh, a long form YouTube clip and then put it, say, take that clip and, and they put it into Opus AI. It will break it down for you. You download those videos and those videos can now be your shorts. So let me put this into, make it simple for you. You can do two YouTube long form content uh, 10 minute videos, eight minute videos per month, one every two weeks. Cool. Then you take that content, put it into Opus AI. It will break it down into eight to 10 to 12 different scripts or sorry, different videos that you can use. So from those two long form contents, you could have 16 to 18 to 20 different YouTube shorts. That's all the content you probably need right there. That's you're talking 30 videos that you could have done or just one per day just from doing two 20, two 10 minute videos. Hey, Travis, one other thing I wanted to think about or want to share is that, or ask your opinion is, people have a tendency to see what I've seen sometimes, it's like they start YouTube and now they think they're gonna get a media business. When you guys started the YouTube and, and all the social media, did you stop your other forms of prospecting? Did you quit talking to people? Or did you add this on and figure out how to compartmentalize the time you were spending on this and not drop the other things that were bringing your business? Because I've seen agents so many times we we start something new and then we stop doing what's working for us. Yeah. But what's you that, use, that, use this as an add-on, right? You figure you yeah. compartmentalize your time to be able to add. Could you walk yeah. through that a little bit? Yeah, it's that it's that shiny new object, right? Like like it just it, it's the squirrel squirrel case, right? There's a squirrel over here or a shiny new object or or this CRM is going to bring me so much business, or this is going to do it, or or whatever Zillow Flex I'm all in on, or whatever you want to talk about, right? Um, you have to time block certain things, and so we time block doing video 
um, to, to a, we don't, I mean, we're working 50, 60 hours a week. We're working more right now than I was working back in 2021 when we were doing 25 loans a month, right? We're only doing 10 loans a month now, but I'm working more hours because I'm setting the platform and the base right now. So my 2024, 2025 are going to be by far our best ever. Uh, you know, our goal is to do 120 million in, in 2025 and we're going to get there. So, and again, we're setting that, the setting those, those, you know, the platform and the basis for that now, but yes, you have to time block and you have to do all the other small activities that, that bring you business, still make your call, still talk to your sphere, still talk, you know, still call your database, you know, every day, you're still doing those things. Um, we're still making 10 phone calls a day to, to, uh, to our referral partners. You still got to do those things that bring you the business while also implementing this new technology that's going to be your business in two more years. Love what you said there in that. And I think it's so important for us as agents to realize right now, Travis is working harder now to do less business. It sucks, right, Travis? It sucks. But it's yeah. the reality of the market of the winter day is you have to go back and work harder now than you've ever worked. And you're probably going to do less deals, potentially, short term. And the lending market's much tougher, guys, than the real estate market in terms of transaction volume. I mean, there's no, there is no refis today. And I don't know what percentage of your business was refis, but I'm sure it was 30 or 40%. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, think about that, guys. So not only did he lose 30 or 40% of business that went zero, we're down 40% transactions, but he's also lost half his business and then another 40% transactions sides. So it's even tougher in his world. But to realize, like, he just realized, like, I got to work hard today, but I'm laying the framework. And for those of us that continue to work right now harder than we ever have, once we come out of this, 24 is going to be tough. Most likely 24 is going to be as tough as 23, if not harder. But 25 and 26 are going to be very good. And for those that survive and pay the price, I mean, I love this. Like, it all sounds exciting. He's doing these videos. I'm getting these calls. But what you're really hearing on the background is I'm busting my ass. Yeah. And you know, we're winning. Yeah. And we're excited about what the future holds. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, I, I want, I'll, I'll end on this, Jeff, and then you can take over. But I talk about this in all the classes we do. And it, these next six to 12 months, folks, I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you, are going to be tough. Like I, we, I talk to a lot of people, Barry Habibs of the world, and uh, I'm in a lot of meetings that we talk about interest rates and and the market in general. Um, and you guys got your own set of messes with what's going on with NAR and some other stuff that you guys are dealing with on your side. Uh, it, it, this next next six to 12 months is going to be it's going to be crappy, right? But always remain positive with your borrowers, your family your, your coworkers, keep it positive. Like you can, you guys can call Jeff and, and, and you can, you can have, you can rant with him a little bit about some troubles you're having. But if you walk into an office or you walk into your, you know, you you're going home, you're talking to a, a loan officer partner, or you're talking to another realtor or a consumer, just keep it positive. You know who you can rant with, but keep everything positive. But going back to that, this next six to 12 months is going to be hard. So, I just recommend like putting your head down, busting your butt every day, improving, find out the two things, the three things that you really need to work on to, to make your business better, to make your 2024, 2025 the best it can be and focus on those things, whether it's video, whether it's it's your database management, whatever it is, just find that one thing and go all in on it like James and I did with video. And I, I promise you that when, when you pick your head up in six to 12 months, you're going to find that 40% of your competition is no longer here. You're going to find that the floodgates have opened back up uh, where people are buying now. All, all it's going to take is these rates to go from high sevens, low eights, back down to 6%. And, and the floodgates are going to open. Those people with the threes and fours will realize that, okay, three to six, four to six is not that bad. I still need to move. I still need to sell. I still need to upgrade. I still need to downsize. The business is going to be there, <clears throat> but most importantly, just put your head down, get to work, and it will all work out for you. I promise if you do those things.
I love it. Well, two two things. One, I want to make sure Leslie gets her question out here. So Leslie, I got you already up on screen. So wait just one second, but I want to hear that. And then two, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Travis um, in particular, if you would put your contact info or how you want people to reach out if they're looking for um, you know, a second opinion on a loan or maybe they need to get a lender in place, they'd like to use you guys as an option. They got to know you today. They're like, that'd be amazing. Um, I personally have worked with Travis. The guy is amazing. He's a machine. So um, absolutely tremendous thing. Thank you, Christine, for bringing him in today. Um, incredible professional. He's got the coolest hair on the block. Um, so I'm super jealous on that one. Leslie, what was your question? Um, yeah, I just was wondering two two quick things on Opus AI. Is that a subscription? Um, no, well, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be. So, so two things, Leslie. Mm -hmm. You can you can use the the Opus AI that goes to 2021 for mm -hmm. free. If you want to do the one that's that's that goes to the internet and gathers the data now, then that's going to be $20 a month. But you can use the Bard, which Jeff put in the in the script in the uh, chat way up above. Um, that one there um, is free. So you can use these for free. Right. Well, the Opus AI, isn't that the one that chops up your long form content? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not even talking about ChatGB. My bad. Yes. Oh, yeah. No. Opus AI, if James is still on, I think we pay... $10 a month for Opus AI, maybe it's $16 a month, but okay. it's gold though, Leslie, if you can, yeah. if you can do that one, yeah. uh, it's huge. Yeah, I was wondering, because Rudy and I are, are putting out two YouTube videos a month yeah. now, yeah. and that would be uh, good yeah. to have it chopped up, because then we're also, we also started an Instagram um, account specifically yeah. related to our YouTube channel. Right, yeah, and you've so been in our office could... a couple of times, you've used our studios and stuff, and yeah, and and so, yeah. yeah, so if you can, yeah, I'll talk to Rudy more about that when he comes to the office, but, but using Opus AI would be massive for those YouTube clips. I mean, just, I mean. Yeah, I just texted him. I was like, James yeah. and Travis, we're just talking about Opus AI. You need to check it out. Yeah. So cool. And then, and then the um, repost, you use that to do, uh, I mean, because what, what I've been doing is I've been making like a, 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 a reel or whatever, and I've been saving it to my phone first. And then. Yeah. uploading it on scram yeah. and then uploading it on whatever but um you're saying to just do the repost well no i i would still save it to your phone so do okay. that and then when you come in the office we can talk one-on-one -on -one about what we use okay. repost for it's great um but as yes, we can do that but okay. jeff if you would like we can teach a whole nother hour class on just how to do instagram reels from cradle to grave at some point in the next couple months if you want us to be happy you know, to be great that. Um, and that way we can dive into those details of just posting an Insta Instagram reel on from from cradle to grave. We can absolutely That's awesome. do that. Do you want to do that? That's awesome. Well, um, and I know everybody appreciates everything that you guys have done today. I know we're at time, so we're going to go ahead and wrap here. We did put James's contact info here in the chat, but also when we post this inside our private group, we'll make sure we put that in there and also inside the community center when you guys are logged in. We'll make sure everything's in there. Um, Travis, uh, thank you. James, thank you. Christine, as always, you're an incredible leader. Thank you for setting this up for us. And for all of those of you who are members of the community, that's incredible. If you're not yet, get back to the person who invited you here today. Chat with them a little bit more about what we're doing and what all this means and uh, why it is that our per agent productivity is up 30% year over year. Um, that's a big deal for us. And we're excited about that. And um, Additionally, I mentioned it at the beginning, but please do look at some of the events that are coming up. I know that travel, it's like, oh, I got so much going on. That's okay. But look at it right now before you get to the end of the year so that you can actually really make a plan and then just work the plan throughout 2024. Um, get it down to the grind. So that's really awesome. Uh, you guys are incredible, Travis, and we appreciate you. Thank you everyone for being here today, for being the very best part of the community. We appreciate you. And we will talk to everybody next week. Thank you.